my loves, I was not planning to film a video today, but I wanted to come in really quick and make an intro for this video. I'm actually in editing mode right now. I was really debating if I wanted to post this video or if I just wanted to keep it private for myself. I already posted about this topic on the communities tab and you guys have been nothing but supportive to the point of tears. I'm so hormonal that I'm getting ready to be emotional at this moment, but I could not get through this pregnancy as well as I'm getting through it and handling these hormones that are causing these crazy roller coaster of emotions if it weren't for you veteran mommies, for you supportive, loving, incredible people. However, it was a little bit of a controversial topic when I started talking about working out and how I'm eating and avoiding cravings and trying to push myself within my limits. I am so restricted and I'm at the point where I have cut my workouts down. First of all, the frequency. I used to work out six days a week. Now I work out about three. And also the intensity and the duration have shortened too. The exercises I do within my workouts have been altered as well as I have to take a lot more breaks to catch my breath. I didn't add that detail into this video when I filmed it the first time and I feel like you kind of need that information in order for it to make sense. I didn't know if I wanted to post this, but then I thought about it. These videos, as much as I film them to help you, to give you insight into my life, I also film them for myself. They're kind of my diary and my journal at this point. For the very few people who will watch this video and think, what a bitch. You need to be grateful to be pregnant. It is an honor. So many people are trying and they can't. Shut up, you're just complaining. Stop being vain. This is not the video for you. I am so grateful. I acknowledge that my body at my age after everything I've done to it for so long, it's a miracle that I'm pregnant. It's a miracle that anybody gets pregnant. That my body is carrying a baby healthily is a miracle. That my body just got pregnant naturally at my age is a miracle. However, I am allowed the grace to be grateful while also having a human experience and feeling the emotions and the feelings of insecurity and doubt and fear as I face this unknown territory and things in my body are changing and I don't know what's going on and it's uncomfortable. I am allowed to feel all of that while I am so grateful. What I won't do is not have my human experience that allows me to be grateful and to acknowledge the miracle. If you don't feel the pain, you don't understand how good the good is. If you don't go through those tough times, you'll never understand or be able to truly be grateful for how good the good things are. Although I understand you telling me to be grateful, that is the last thing somebody who's hormonal wants to hear. Just think of it from this perspective. I never once told anybody, well, be grateful that your husband has an out date and you shouldn't feel sad that he's going through X, Y, and Z in there and he's in solitary confinement and he could be beat, beaten up, but be grateful because he has an out date and mine's a lifer. I never said that to somebody, although that could be the God's honest truth. That is so insensitive in the moment. Think about it like that. I am so, so, so beyond grateful to be experiencing this opportunity, just like I know that woman at the end of the day would never have traded places with me, not knowing that Adam would come home because her husband did have an outdate. It didn't take away her pain in the moment. It didn't take her away her fear and her anxiety that something was gonna happen to her husband, her insecurities that whatever else could happen. It's the same thing here. While I understand that I need to be grateful and I am beyond grateful, Sometimes you don't need to hear the obvious thing in the moment. I'm not saying there's no such thing as tough love because sometimes I need some major tough love, but you don't kick somebody while they're down either. And lastly, for the people who are saying that I'm just posting things for attention and I don't really feel like that because I'm skinny and this and that, I've dealt with body dysmorphia and disordered eating since I was 11 years old. The earliest I can remember putting myself on a diet and trying to starve myself was 11 years old. That is fifth and sixth grade. I am not making this up. 
This has been my biggest struggle in life. And I'm sharing this with you guys because I finally got myself to a healthy point, but that doesn't mean that this whole experience isn't coming without its own set of insecurities and issues. And I don't know if I'm just at a point 15 weeks with my hormones that are creating these crazy insecurities and these meltdowns as my body changes and then the hormones will maybe even out or whatever, one will increase and the other one will decrease and I'll feel better. But I wouldn't be being true to you or myself if I didn't share this part of my journey and my struggles, although I'm second guessing it because of those harsh comments. I won't not because this isn't just for us right now, just like the videos I made when Adam was in prison. This is for all the people coming up behind me that could potentially be facing those issues. And 99.9% .9 of women who live in the current society with social media the way it is, with tabloids the way they are, majority of us have body image issues. So this video is me just being honest. It's not me being ungrateful. It's me sharing my feelings with you. If you think that I'm doing this for attention, yet you comment on probably 10 people's comments to stop supporting me, I'm looking for attention. That, my dear, is the pot calling the kettle black. Number one, number two, I ask for you to please remove yourself from my channel if you're somehow here watching this, before I have to waste my very limited energy to find the ban button and block the f out of you. So without wasting any more time, I love you guys. You guys are so, so, so supportive. I am so grateful for you, for your comments in the communities tab, and for helping me through this crazy emotional time, the most amazing time in my whole entire life that doesn't come without some dips in emotions and spikes in hormones and chewing gum while making a video because my heartburn is real right now. It's the joys of being part of this club of mommies that I never thought I'd be inducted to in my whole entire life. And for that and for your support, I am so grateful. So if you're interested after that long-winded intro in watching about why I'm still working out, how I'm still working out, and how I'm trying to stay healthy while having the mind of body image issues and gaining weight rapidly without looking pregnant and without feeling pregnant because the first trimester horror show is kind of behind me and now I'm left in a much better position but I don't feel as bad anymore and I just look, I don't look or feel pregnant at this point. That's all I'm trying to say. So it's just messing with my mind. Until I get my belly, I think that's where I'm gonna be. And that's okay because so many of you told me that's where you were. And so many of you guys watching this that are pregnant in the same phase or are looking to get pregnant and are going to hit this phase, you're normal too. I love you guys. Hello my friends, it's me Ro. Welcome back to my channel. So this is an impromptu, totally unplanned video. No makeup, fresh off a workout, still sweaty. That's why I'm filming sitting on my exercise slash pregnancy ball that I just got myself. I blew it up and then Adam came home from work that night, the day I bought it, and he was like, we should have gotten that months ago. What took us so long? <laughs> Cause I sit on here and I work and all that stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to pop in with some thoughts in response to me trying to have a healthy pregnancy, me working out, while I'm pregnant, what I'm doing different, what my doctor's saying, what you guys are saying, and all of that fun stuff. So if you're interested in my thoughts on trying to have a healthy pregnancy and response to some of the hate comments I've gotten about my working out and my eating and all that fun stuff, please keep watching. Let's start with a little story time. Yesterday, I tried to do a workout. I was wearing a long sleeve thermal shirt, leggings, and thick socks. I was in the house. It was my lunch break from work, and I asked Adam what he did for his workout in the morning before work. He did something like 15 pull-ups, 60 push-ups, and 100 squats for five rounds. So usually I'll take his workouts and I'll alter them for my fitness level, always. Now I have to alter them down even more for my pregnancy fitness level. I'm a lot weaker, I can't breathe as much, and I need more breaks as I get more and more and more pregnant. And that's totally fine. It's kind of a mind 
how do you say that without cursing? It kind of plays games with your mind, but it is what it is at this point. I started the workout and I got one rep in and I had to go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom, I come back, I go to try again, I feel weak, I stop. It took me probably four different times to restart this workout before I could kind of get into it. I had to pee after every set of five sets, you guys. So it was probably a 20 minute workout. I had to pee after every set. I would stop and I would breathe. I would text people. Normally I put my phone away when I work out, but it was just one of those days. And as I'm working out and I'm getting warmer, I took off my shirt. This is probably after the first set. The closets in our house are mirrored doors. So I walked by the mirrored door and I started to have a meltdown because here I am peeing after every set. I can't catch my breath. I can barely get up on the pull-up bar. I could barely do sets of five to seven push-ups from my knees. Normally I'm banging those out in sets of 20 from my feet. So I was just in my head a little bit. Walk by the mirror, I see myself and I just looked puffy. I looked chubby. I looked like I've been eating bagels and cookies versus being pregnant. I'm just at that awkward phase where I don't necessarily have a bump yet. I just look like I've put on a lot of weight. Now, before we continue, here's a disclaimer. I know my body's going through some major changes. I know that I am building a human being and that is a miracle. And this is my miracle baby. <laughs> this is my miracle baby. I should not be pregnant. Adam shouldn't be here. I know all of that. I do, I promise you, I know that. And I am doing my best to focus on that. But I'm giving you my opinion as a human being, somebody who has competed in fitness. So I literally had to get on a stage for close to a decade. I would get on a stage and I would have my physique assessed by judges. When you do that, it seems as if everybody in the world turns into a judge and feels validated to judge your physique and your body. And there were so many times where I would come off of a competition. So stage weight is very different from normal everyday life. You're way too low in body fat, especially as a woman, to walk around like that day to day. It's unhealthy. In fact, I had doctors tell me that I'd never be able to get pregnant because I walked around lean, too lean for a woman without my period for so long. Because once you get to between 10 and 13% body fat for a woman, you lose your period. And it just depends on your body, where your body feels healthy. You lose your period because you don't have enough body fat for your body to create another life. Your body is this amazing machine that is so intelligent, it stops giving you your period so you can't get pregnant because it knows that you can't carry a baby to full term. After a certain amount of times, you will start to become infertile. You can't have kids. So again, this is truly, truly my miracle baby. I know that, I focus on that, but I also have all of these issues. Society tells us we need to look a certain way, even pregnant. We need to look a certain way, gaining weight so rapidly and not necessarily looking pregnant, but looking like I've just given up on life and fitness is really messing with my mind. So I'm just telling you my thoughts and how I'm pulling myself out of it in real time versus me complaining about gaining weight. I hope you know the difference and I'm sure anybody who's been pregnant, is pregnant, or is looking to get pregnant can or will relate in some way, shape, or form. So I went past the mirror, peed for like the fifth time, could not get up on the bar, couldn't do my workout, and I just started to have a meltdown. I started to cry. I texted Adam, I am so weak. And he is so encouraging and so amazing. And he said, you are strong and you're beautiful and you're even more beautiful now. Oh my God, I'm so hormonal, I'm making myself cry. And he said, the only thing is, I wish I was there to work out with you. And I was like, no, you don't. I have to stop every five seconds and go to the bathroom. I am so slow. I can't breathe, yada, yada. And he was like, you've got this. You're killing it. In that moment, I stopped myself, right? And I said, I have a choice. I can be a victim and I can cave to this. I can pack it in and I can lay on the couch and eat chocolate chip cookies. Or I can pull up my big girl workout tights and I can finish this. I could do what I can. I can take it one step out of time. I recently heard a quote and it said, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I texted Adam back and I said, I'm just in the process of eating an elephant one rep at a time. I took out my dry erase markers and I wrote on the mirror. I said, I am beautiful. I am strong. I've got this. 
one rep at a time. I am teaching my baby to be strong and we've got this. And slowly but surely, I took my time and I finished my workout. That was in my head this morning when I went to do my next workout. Within 25 seconds of this workout, I am not exaggerating, 25 seconds, I had to pee. I just started laughing. I had to stop every minute to minute and a half for the first 10 minutes of this workout to pee. It was a lot of jumping, it was a lot of high intensity, and I just went with it. I couldn't keep up with all of the jumping, I couldn't keep up with all of the lunging, I have a bad knee, and I did what I could, and I've been working out for so long I substituted where I needed to. I got through that workout and I felt so accomplished. So it's a matter of mindset, and for you guys that are so concerned, and I had somebody literally in my face screaming at me, telling me that I'm hurting my baby, telling me that I am such a bad mother because I'm working out. I should be laying on the couch, I should be resting, I should take off for nine months, and I should be eating so much more. How dare I only feed my baby fruit and salad? And I wanna to respond to that because in a sea of social media where we're against body shaming and this shaming and that shaming, what about pregnancy shaming? I'm not saying she's wrong. I am not saying I'm right. All I am saying is we don't need to shame each other when we're pregnant. I follow a lot of fitness girls who do all kinds of intense workouts while pregnant. Olympic athletes, CrossFit competitors, beach body gurus, and everything in between. I watch them get shamed day in and day out for doing pregnancy wrong. But who's to say who's right or wrong? Now to respond to that lady that was literally a stranger in my face screaming at me, I've been working out for 30 years. 25 of those 30 years have been very intense. 10 of those years, I was a competitive athlete. If I just stopped and did nothing, that would hurt my body more than if I continued and just went at my own pace. It's kind of like my uncle, who had smoked since he was 10 years old, hit his 80s and figured, I might as well quit because everybody's telling me I have to. At 80 years old, his body went into shock and he developed all of these different issues and within two years he had passed. Now let me disclaimer that. I think that there is no wrong age to quit smoking and if you work with your doctor, you can do it in a healthy way. But what I'm saying is, if your body is used to something and then boom, you stop, you're gonna shock it. I totally understand what you're saying. If somebody automatically gets pregnant and they've never worked out a day in their life and they've sat at a job for eight hours a day and then they go home and lay on the couch and watch TV because they're so tired in the evening and all of a sudden they get pregnant and they're like, oh my God, I don't wanna gain weight. I'm gonna start this rigorous fitness regimen. Of course, that is a horrible idea and that is awful for their body and their baby and they need to talk to their doctor about how to proceed with moving. I had a friend who decided at nine months pregnant, she was an athlete, and then she took off for 30 weeks of her pregnancy because she was scared. And then she decided one day that she was gonna run sprints. And when she ran those sprints, she put herself into premature labor. And she was very lucky that her baby made it, but she had a lot of complications and she had to be rushed to the emergency room. I think she like, um, I don't know the word for it, but she dislodged her placenta, there was a word, and if she didn't get to the emergency room when she did, she could have lost her baby and had a stillborn and potentially died. So I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, you have to trust that I am doing what my doctor says, that I'm listening to my body, and that if I sat around for nine months, I wouldn't be giving my baby the oxygen that it's used to. I've been working out almost every day, since for years before, but also since the day I was pregnant, I wouldn't be releasing those feel good endorphins that my baby was getting for the whole first trimester into the second trimester of my pregnancy and then it would just stop and I don't think that that's good for the baby. So while I understand what you're saying, I don't agree with what you're saying. I'm not gonna just stop. I'm not gonna put my baby at risk. I'm not gonna put myself at risk. This is my miracle and I'm so grateful to be here despite the negative complex situation that I have going on with my body changing and gaining weight that's basically normal for most women. I will get past that, but I also am not gonna do anything to jeopardize my health or the health of my unborn child. But I just want you to think about the difference between health and what society tells us we should do when we're pregnant. And laying on a couch and eating Doritos isn't healthy for anybody. 
Starting a workout program, a rigorous workout program, when you find out you're pregnant is also not healthy. But you need to speak to your doctor. My doctor told me that I am allowed to do everything that I did before I was pregnant now until she tells me further. I am 99% certain that she's gonna have a conversation with me at my next appointment, my second trimester appointment, because I'm already not able to hang from a bar and do pull-ups very well. I'm already now, just this week, I'm hitting 15 weeks in two days. It's hard for me to kind of lay on my back and I'm really paranoid about ripping my abs as I get bigger. I have had the pleasure of my workout partner went through two pregnancies with me at the gym. She was, let me, let me rephrase, I don't have any other kids. This is my first pregnancy. But she was pregnant for two of her babies, both of her babies, and I was her workout partner. And we went to this amazing group training gym. It was just a really good CrossFit that was very family oriented. I think there were five or six pregnant girls there, including the owner, were pregnant. Not every gym is good. Not every group training gym is good. And CrossFit has a bad name for a reason a lot of times. You have to find a good one. Every gym has its own culture and some of it is harder, faster, stronger, regardless of what it's doing to your body. I don't like those gyms. The gym that I went to was family oriented. Your health and your safety were first, but you still got a damn good workout. I watched my partner had to have to scale back, but she stayed at the gym for I think 38 weeks until basically the day before her baby was born. So you can do it and you could do it right as long as you follow the advice of your doctor, your healthcare provider and or your trainer. But first and foremost, your healthcare provider. I will do what my doctor says. This is not about vanity. It's more about health. It's about a healthy delivery, labor and delivery. I'm gonna be honest, that has been my biggest fear in life since I was a little girl. Since I discovered, I should say, how babies are born and they're not born by a stork and they don't just pop out of your belly. Since I discovered what labor and delivery was, I, or is, I've been petrified of it. And I've read and I've heard and my doctor told me and so many friends have told me, the more in shape you can keep yourself, the easier your labor and your delivery will be. So that's in my mind as well. As far as my eating, I talked about this in a different video, but my baby is a vegetable lover. My baby craves salad, it's crazy. I eat a lot of carbs too though. What I don't eat is sugar. This baby does not like sugar. Like sometimes I'll crave it and I'll put a cookie or something in my mouth and I have to spit it out because it's disgusting to me. So that's worked for me. I make sure I eat a ton of vegetables, a ton of fruit, a ton of complex carbs, oatmeal, sweet potatoes. I eat a ton of fruit, but that's how I've always eaten. I'm not just gonna wake up one day pregnant and be like, oh, all my fruits and vegetables and health and vitamins and iron are going out the window. And now I get to eat cake and cookies and ice cream and Doritos and flour and bread and gluten and all the stuff that I've been avoiding for so many years for health because I'm pregnant. Let me go to the drive-thru, let me get some McDonald's. If I want it someday, every once in a while, fine. I've eaten my fair share of wraps and sandwiches and bread and cookies when my baby could handle them throughout the past 15 weeks. But the staples that I've always eaten, lean proteins, fruits, vegetables, complex carbs, eggs, seafood, fish, will remain there because that's what's healthy for me. And what's healthy for me is what's healthy for this little man that's growing inside of me. I hope I'm not on a soapbox. That's what's worked for me. That does not mean that's what works for you or what you need to do in your pregnancy. I just felt compelled to make this video because I've had a few people respond to me. I mean, 100% of your comments, let me just start by saying this. Let me end by saying this. 20 minutes later, let me start. No. 100% of your comments have been loving and supportive and helpful. And, and you veteran mamas who give me encouragement and advice, I can't even tell you how far that takes me. I love you guys so much. You are making this so much easier for me. You are so helpful. 100% of your comments. The lady that screamed in my face, I don't understand that. I don't understand why we're shaming each other for being wrong or right during pregnancy. Yet there was this whole movement about not shaming parents and not telling people how to parent their child. Well, that starts here. I work so closely with my doctor. I am so, so, so in tune with my body. I'm doing what I feel is best for my baby.
I think that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you did during your pregnancy. Did you work out? Were you the type that laid on the couch and you didn't want to work out because you were scared? Maybe you were a high risk. I would just love to know in the comments how all of us mamas do it differently because like I said, no one's right and no one's wrong. What's right for you is what your doctor works with you and you feel the most comfortable doing. Okay, I love you guys. We're gonna be back with a lighthearted, more fun one, ASAP. Do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. It just helps me out so much in YouTube. If you are interested in another video with me, click that video right there. If you want to subscribe so you never miss a video from me in the future, just click that circle there. Or if you don't see that, the red box below. I love, 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 love you guys so much. There aren't words. There really aren't words. Me and my healthy baby need to go eat and shower. We, <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Mwah.